the next point to us, we should ensure that whatever we do is true. That means work is being done, we can see that it is in opposite direction. It is against. Hello, my students and other learners. I welcome you to this segment of the e-learning organized by Ministry of Education, Kaduna State. My name is Ibrahim Zakari, your history teacher. If you could remember, in our previous lesson, we have treated nationalism and nationalist activities in West Africa. We have also discussed the nationalist activities in Nigeria that led to the attainment of our independence on 1st October 1960. Today our topic of discussion is the problem faced by the First Republic and the 15th January first military coup. My students, let me explain or define the word republic. What is a republic? A republic is a system of government where elected representatives were supreme and the president is elected. A republic is not a kingdom where we have a king or a queen as a ruler. A republic is not an empire where we have an emperor or empress as a ruler. What is the first republic? Which administration is the first republic? The first elected civilian administration immediately after our independence under the leadership of al Hajisa Abu Bakr Tapawa Balewa was the first republic in Nigerian history. After attainment of independence, there were a lot of problems faced by this republic. First republic, as I have said, was the first elected civilian administration headed by al Hajisa Abu Bakr Tapawa Balewa who ruled from 1960 to 1966. He was in control of the government. We had the president in the person of Dr. Namdi Azikwe, but he was a president without portfolio. The power rested in the hand of the prime minister. Why? Because we have adopted a system of administration that of Britain fashion. That was the parliamentary system of government. We have the prime minister and we have the president. But the real power rested in the hands of the prime minister. Let us look at the structural arrangement of the First Republic. Now we have states. During the First Republic, we only had regions. Before we have three regions, Northern region, Western region, and the Eastern region. In 1963, the fourth region was carved out of the Western region. That was the Midwest region. These regions exercise autonomous power. They were independent of one another. Let us look at the administration of these regions in brief. In the northern region, we have the premier. The premier exercise power controlled the administration. And then we had the governor as the president without portfolio, so the governor in the region also is a governor without portfolio. Who 
was the premier of the northern region as of that time? The premier was Al Haji Sir Ahmad Biello de Sardana of Sokoto. Sir Kashim Ibrahim was the governor. In the western region, from 1960 to 1966, we had Dr. Samuel Ladoke Akintola as the premier and the governor there was Odeleye Pidanhunsi, a governor with that portfolio. In the eastern region, we have Dr. Okfara as the premier, Sir Francis Ibiam as the governor. In the newly created Midwest region, we have Dr. Osadebe, that was Dennis Osadebe as the premier. Then we have Samuel Sami Rere as the governor. That was the set off. The first republic was formed by coalition government, coalition of two parties, the NCNC and the NPC came together to form the first government of the first republic. The NCNC produced the president, Dr. Namdi Azikwe, and some ministers, and the Senate president, Uwapo Urizo. The NPC produced the prime minister and some other ministers. Let us look at the political parties during the First Republic. During the First Republic, we have the NCNC under Dr. Namdi Azikwe, National Convention of Nigerian and Cameroon, which was later changed to National Convention of Nigerian Citizen. We have the NPC, Northern People's Congress, under the Sardana of Sokoto. We have the NEPU, Northern Element Progressive Union, under Al Haji Aminu Kano. We also had the ITP, Ilorin Talaka. Parapo under Dr. Josia. We have the BYM, Borno Youth Movement, under Al Haji Ibrahim Imam. We have the UMBC, United Middle Belt Congress, under Dr. Joseph Tarfa. Those were some of all the most important political parties during the First Republic. The First Republic, as I have made mention, it was ruled by a coalition government, NCNC and the NPC. The action group under Dr. Obapemi Awolo was left aside as a leading opposition party, the action group. Okay, let us look at the problem faced by this administration. During the First Republic, the politicians were very powerful. There was the emergence of powerful politicians. Foreign investors and capital lenders exercised their influence through these politicians. For that reason, any useful development plans that will move the country forward, but unfortunately, which failed to serve the interests of these politicians, was always ignored, distorted. Some major sectors of the economy, at the same time, were controlled by foreigners. In brief, 
the first republic faced the problem of new colonialism, which was planted before British granted our independence. Another problem faced by this administration was unfriendly relation among the regions as a result of the imbalance of the size of the regions. I have explained the regions. We have the northern region, western, eastern, and the Midwest. The British designed or carved out the northern region to be larger than both western and eastern region much together. This annoyed southern elites. They felt that the British wanted to fave way or to support the northerners to control the parliament. So when there was an when there was a census in 1962, the returns gave the North a voting force to control the parliament. Why? Because they have won majority seats. So the Southerners refused to accept the census results. The following year, another census was conducted. The previous one was canceled by Tapao Balewa administration. At the same time, the returns also gave the North another voting force to control the parliament because the Northerners appear to, uh, to have 29 million people. 29 million, while by the East had less than 13 million. The West had less than 11 million. If you match them together, they were not as big as the uh, Northerners. This annoyed them. So, it also sharpened hostilities, rivalries among various regions in Nigeria. Since the country was ruled by a coalition government of the NPC and NCNC, the action group was excluded. Not any Yoruba man was assigned to serve as a minister under Tapawa Balewa cabinet. So exclusion of action group was directly exclusion of the whole Western region. Exclusion of the Western region was also exclusion of the entire Yoruba people from participating in federal power. Not any Yoruba man served as a minister let alone president or prime minister. Prime minister came from the north, the president from the east. We had only some members of House of Assembly and House of Representatives from Action Group, but no any ministerial force was given to them. For that reason, the Yorubas felt that they had been cheated. In 1962, there was misunderstanding between Chief Obapemi Awolowo and his deputy, the present premier of Western region, Sir S.L. Akintola. So Chief Akintola and his supporters defied, rejected the leadership of Chief Awolowo what was the root cause of this misunderstanding? The first problem faced by the action group was the introduction of social democracy as a political 
ideology of the action group by Obapemi Aolo, Akintola, and some other top officials of action group refused to accept this socialist democracy ideology as their political doctrine. They refused to accept it. Secondly, when Akintola advised Aolo that they should also join the coalition government with the NCNC and the NPC, Aolo refused. This annoyed Akintola and his supporters. That was the second reason. The last reason, Aolo wanted Akintola to act as a premier according to instruction given to him by Aolo. Akintola refused to accept this idea. He felt that since he was the premier of the Western region, he has to be allowed to rule independently. He should not wait and serve as a soccer that Aolo should be given instruction. He should not decide any issue without informing Obafemi Aolo. This brought about this misunderstanding and conflict, and the party was split into two. So the West was divided automatically after the split of the action group into two warring factions. There was constant riot, demonstration. The supporters of Akintola were attacked by the supporters of Chief Obapemi Awolo on daily basis because they were the minority there. There was mass killing of people, destruction of property. Another problem faced by the Peace Republic was attempted coup staged by action group top officials to overthrow Tapawa Balewa administration. They were arrested, tried, and sentenced to various jail terms. This also sharpened hostilities among the Yoruba people and the Northerners. Some Northerners were attacked in the Western region and killed. Political Party Alliance. A few months to the election, the political parties in the country grouped themselves into two alliances. United Progressive Grand Alliance, OBGA, which includes Action Group, NCNC, NEPU, BYM, ITP, and the UNBC, OPGA. That was the first group. Then there was the second group, NNA, Nigerian National Alliance, which includes the NPC, the NNDP. This NNDP was the breakaway part of action group under Akintola, and another breakaway faction of the NCNC under Femi Fani Kayode. They marched together and formed the NNDV. Then we have the Niger Delta Congress under Melpod Okilo. 
they came together and formed an alliance known as the NNA. The NNA and the Ofga became very antagonistic. Automatically, the country were polarized into two warring factions. This also served as a problem faced by the Pez Republic. With regards to the 1966 January coup, the coup plotters, the young Igbo army officers, the young majors, used the above mentioned factors we have made mention as a free text to stage an abortive coup, which was reactionary in conception and bloody by design and it was lopsided. Another reason given by these coup plotters was that there was corruption and bribery on the part of the government official to the marrow. But the real reason why the young Igbo army officers attempted that coup. The most important reason was the northernization policy of the Sardauna of Sokoto. What was that northernization policy? It was an attempt by Sardauna to safeguard the interests of the northerners against the most advanced, educated southerners who wanted to come to our own region, the northern region, in order to dominate the vacant left by the less educated northerners. So the Sardanas said or stated that not is mainly for northerners. If you are from the south, we only employ you under contract. So the southerners were not happy with this newly introduction of uh, policy. At the same time, there was a particular tribe by virtue of their number and the number of their army officers. They felt it was an opportunity for them to dominate other Nigerians for that reason they staged a coup. The young army officers also, they were over ambitious to seize power. They were not revolutionary officers. They were reactionary. The coup was lopsided and bloody and generally unacceptable. Not any Igbo army officer was killed, with the exception of Lieutenant Colonel Onegbe, who was killed accidentally because of some misunderstanding between him and the coup plotters. But top army officers from the northern origin were killed and some from the Western origin were killed, and the Easterners were left untouched. Civilian politicians also, from the Northern origin and the Western origin, were killed. That of the Eastern origin were left untouched. Let me mention some of top military army officers who lost their life. We have, okay, Major General Zakari Mimalari, Colonel Largema, Colonel Kur Mohammed, Colonel Yakubu Farm, all were killed. We have Colonel Shodende, Colonel Ademulegun, also, all they were killed. The Sardana of Sokoto, Akintola, Okoti Ebo, 
all were killed by the Igbos. Dr. Opara Namdi Azikwe, Dennis Osadeve, Francis Ibiam, Unwapo Orizo were left untouched. So the coup was lopsided. Who were the coup plotters? Let me mention them in a hurry. We have Major Unzegu, Major Donatus Okapo, Major Unwatebu, Major Anufuro, Major Chukuka, Major Emmanuel Ifiajuna, Major Ademoega, Captain Bully, uh, then we have uh, Captain Oewole, a Yorubaman, the only Yorubaman who joined the bandwagon. And we have other few lieutenants. These were the coup plotters. So my student, I will wind off here. Before I go, I would like to give you an assignment that will keep you busy. Number one, explain four problems faced by the First Republic. Second, do you agree the coup was lopsided? If I say lopsided, I mean it has affected only one part of the country, only some part of the population, and left others, and left other facts, that was lopsided. If you agree, explain. My name is Ibrahim Zakari. My contact number, if you want to send your attempted assignments or any question you want to ask, is 070 3260 Zero seven zero eight four twenty thirty two sixty. Ibrahim Zakari. Stay home, stay safe, keep learning. Thank you.